join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, of America and to, to, the republic, to the republic for which, which it stands, stands, one nation, nation under, under God, God, God divisible, 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 liberty, liberty, liberty justice, and justice for all. For all. Before we proceed this evening, we will have two moments of silence. First, let us reflect on the life and death of George Floyd. Mr. Floyd was a father and security guard. His life was unnecessarily taken in the custody of a Minneapolis police officer last week, and his death has again catalyzed an uprising to end systemic racism. Please join me in a moment of silence for George Floyd. Second, let us remember Chief David Dorn, a beloved retired police officer and former chief in Moline Acres, who was killed in the midst of last night's civil unrest while trying to protect the St. Louis City business from looters. We hope we can use our collective power to eliminate the disparities that caused the circumstances that led to his tragic death, just like that of Mr. Floyd's. Please join me in a moment of silence for Chief Dorn. Thank you. Please call the roll. Council member days. Here. Council member Dunaway. Am I on the screen? Now you are. Present. Council member Fitch. Well, can I say here without you seeing me? We can see you. We can see you. Okay. Here. Council member Gray. But present, but I'm not on the screen. Council member Clancy. I'm I'm here. It appears to be a little slower tonight to get the council members on the screen. <laughs> council member Trachis. We can see you now. Okay, I'm present. Thank you. Council member Harder. Present. Go ahead. Madam Chair, we have a quorum. All right. Are we having some technical difficulties? On mine, it shows up right away. I don't know what the holdup is. Okay. Well, I will go ahead. Is there a motion for approval of the journal of the meeting of May 19th, 2020? So moved. Days. Second, Fitch. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. The May 19th, 2020 journal is approved. Is there a motion for approval of the journal of the meeting of May 26, 2020? So moved. So Dave. Moved. Or second, either one. I heard a motion from Councilwoman Gray and a second from Councilwoman Days. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. The May 26, 2020 journal is approved. We have no bid openings this evening, so we will move to communications. Madam Chair, we have no tax compromises or zoning matters this evening, so we'll move to road and bridge matters. 
under road and bridge matters, item number one, sixth district. Yes, please uh, review file plans, specifications, and detailed estimate of cost be approved. And the director of procurement be authorized to advertise for bids as recommended and a copy of the report be sent to the interested parties. Second, Carter. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to other communications, item number one. Receive and file and that will be the order. Item number two, sixth district. Please hold on the order of business. So ordered. Item number three, fourth district. Receive file and the liquor license be denied for the reasons cited by the dir director of revenue in the communication. So ordered. Item number four. Receive and file and be the order. Item number five. Receive file and the appropriation transfer be approved as requested. Is there a, is there a second? Second, Councilwoman Gray. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Motion carries. Item number six. Receive file and the county councilor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation and that will be the order. Item number seven, sixth district. Receive file, the county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. Same motion for item number eight, please. So ordered. Item number nine. Receive file and the county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation and that will be the order. Item number 10, first district. Receive file and the county council be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation and a copy of this report be sent to the city of Wellston. So ordered. Item number 11, first district. Receive file and the county council be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation and a copy of this report be sent to the city of University City. So ordered. Please read the add-ons. Under other communications, item number one, seventh district. Receive file and the county counselor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number two, fourth, first, second, and fifth districts. Receive file and the county counselor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Um, we are now at the report of the county executive. Dr. Page is not with us tonight. I was asked to share that he is meeting with law enforcement officials this evening um, at this time in preparation for tonight's events. With that, we will move on to report of special committees. Um, well, I have my update, but I'll go ahead and, and get these records pulled in. Receive file and the report dated May 21st, 2020 be adopted as submitted. Second, days. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Receive file and the report dated May 26th, 2020 be adopted as submitted. Second, days. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. In our oversight meeting this morning, oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, please let the record reflect that Councilman Trachis has also said aye. Yes, ma'am. In our oversight meeting this morning, uh, we got caught up on a couple of outstanding issues, clarifying that the escalator demolition project is not coming out of the CARES Act grant, grant that masks were purchased under emergency procurement guidelines that don't require a formal RFP, and that we paid about $2 per mask. 
We discussed the support we're providing to nursing homes, and while we aren't offering any financial assistance, we have been providing PPE and other supplies. Our public health department advised that there is state funding supporting nursing homes. The Small Business Relief Program application process closed Sunday with 3,761 applications, totaling just under $48 million. The Small Business Relief Program is now in the audit phase, and 3,400 emails have gone out requesting additional information from applicants. We have received 129 responses that have been forwarded, forwarded on to Reuben Brown, which is the accounting firm managing this audit. Applicants have eight days to respond with their additional information, and the county CARES team has created a call center on the ninth floor to respond to questions about the Small Business Relief Program. This hotline can be reached at 314-615-1778. As of this morning, we were experiencing heavy call volume. We meet each Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. and hope you can join us. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilwoman Dunaway. Um, before we go into public forum tonight, Madam Clerk, we need to go back to um, communication number three. It has been brought to my attention that there does need to be a vote on that item, and we did not do that. Councilwoman Gray, if you could make your um, your motion again. Did you say communication number three? Yes, it is a denial of a liquor license. Oh, just says so ordered. Uh, receive, file, and the liquor license be denied for the reasons cited by the Director of Revenue in the communication. Is there a second? Second. Days. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. We will go back to um, Report of special committees, although I believe that was the report of special committees we just heard. We will now move into public forum. Um, again, before we move into public forum tonight, I want to remind everyone of the rules of the public forum. And again, that um, this forum can be a source of pride for us all and can serve as a positive example to residents and other policymaking bodies in the region. Um, I encourage every person who participates in this forum to to speak with respect and tolerance towards the council, toward other officials in county government, and to each other. Um, only comments sent to council comments at stlouisco.com on which the meeting, on the day in which the meeting is being held, at least an hour prior to the meeting, will be read into the record. The email must contain your name and physical address. The message in the email must be 400 words or less, which is the equivalent of three minutes of verbal communication, which is the typical time allotted to speakers when we are here in person. The administrative director or a designee will read the comment out loud during the meeting and it will be recorded into the journal. With that, Madam Clerk, please proceed with the public forum. Yes, Madam Chair, this evening we have 22 written public comments. Our first one comes from Shannon McCullough, DVM, 9948 Litzinger Road, St. Louis, Missouri, 63124. The violence and rioting must stop. Four police officers shot last night. A person defending his business shot and killed by protesters last night in the city of St. Louis. A business burned to the ground. When is enough enough? What is wrong with the following? You don't allow churches to have people gather in sanctuaries to pray for our cities and country, but you allow hundreds of protesters to gather together with no social distancing or masks. You don't allow families to even sit together at restaurants. We were there on Sunday. A family we know had to be divided into two, eating at separate tables, and the tables weren't even next to each other. Yet you allow hundreds of people to gather together, blocking our highways. You don't allow businesses to open like House of Pain and other health clubs, workout facilities that help keep people healthy. Yet you allow groups of thugs to break into our local businesses and steal product with no consequences. My God, when is this going to stop? Explain this to our children. Explain this to your children. I'd like an explanation. Please explain this to me. I am exhausted. I have been working full time. 
thank you, God, since the pandemic began because I am essential worker. The stress we are all under is unbelievable. As I watch some individuals sit back and collect unemployment because they will make more money collecting unemployment than to work, it makes me sick. I am working hard so they can sit home and collect unemployment. That is fair, right? Our healthcare workers that have been working so hard the last few months now being laid off because the hospitals and healthcare facilities are struggling financially because of all the elective procedures that were not allowed to be done because of the restrictions put into place by government officials due to coronavirus. Is this fair? We cannot allow the insanity to continue. We cannot give in to anarchy, whether it be the crazy and completely without merit restrictions placed on us because of COVID-19 or the complete breakdown in civility with the violence and riots that are going unchecked in our cities. This is the lesson. Never give in. Never give in. Never, 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 never. In nothing, great or small, Lord, large or petty, never get in give in except to convictions of honor and good sense. And I have to cut it off there at 400 words. Our next comments were submitted by Patty Cantor, 8025 Maryland Avenue, Clayton, Missouri, 63105. St. Louis County continues to be partially shut down. Pools and fitness centers are closed. Playgrounds and parks are still closed. However, Sam Page allowed hundreds, if not over a thousand people, to gather and walk through the streets of Clayton on Saturday and then allowed them to shut down Forest Park Parkway. There was no social distancing during any of this time. Why can hundreds of people gather for one reason while another group is denied? I'd honestly like an answer from Sam Page why this group was allowed to gather and other groups are denied during the shutdown. If COVID-19 is that virulent and deadly, why would you take a chance on allowing anybody to gather? Did you not care about the health of the protesters? We will be waiting for the COVID-19 numbers in 14 days. If there is a spike, we'll know why. Sam Page and the County Council allowed a gathering of hundreds or more. That will be the reason. When it's politically expedient, you allow huge gatherings. When it's for regular citizens, it seems you rule with an iron fist. The citizens of St. Louis County are no longer safe. Four police officers in the city of St. Louis were shot last night. Looting occurred and fires were set. If the anarchists are shooting police officers, they will not hesitate to shoot citizens. I read an article that reported you were on the phone with Governor Parsons and a representative Sunday stating you did not want the National Guard sent to St. Louis County. Is that true? If so, I hope you're reconsidering. Why aren't our police officers allowed to do their job? Why do politicians insert themselves where they have little or no training? Why frustrate the officers and put the public they serve at great risk? Citizens do not want to watch their community looted and burned by anarchists. Get out of the way of the experts and let the police handle crime and now anarchy. You did all you could to protect us from COVID-19. We expect you to do all you can to protect us from the anarchy. Put your pol politics aside and protect the citizens of St. Louis County. Start today. From Laura McCabe, from Laura and Eric McCabe, 7052 Christopher Drive, Oakville, Missouri, 63129. We are writing with a plea to overturn the inappropriate decision that was made to allow a for-profit business. Monte Nito to purchase a home near ours under the guise of a group home, but in reality, a for-profit medical treatment center. We are certain if the facts were known, this decision would not have been made. However, now that they have been brought to light, a correction must occur and this decision to be reversed to ensure our beautiful community remain a thriving residential one. After reviewing this company's website, it appears that their other locations are on large multi-acre lots away from others to provide privacy for their clients. This location with very little green space would provide a dangerous location on a bluff to those with a compromised mental state. Protect, 
Projecting one step further, if this business model is unsuccessful for Montanito, what stops the owner from shifting it to a drug rehab or some inappropriate business model in our neighborhood? If Montanito is sold, precedence for commercial property use has been established, making it easier to continue as commercial use with various business models. Please take this opportunity to show your citizens that you care for our well-being over some out-of-town business. Now is the time for action. Thank you in advance for your protection. From Kathy Ellis, 7140 Christopher Drive, St. Louis, Missouri, 63129. I am writing to voice my concern about the parking lot Montenito has requested to go in a residential neighborhood. First, Montenito applied for a parking permit that was titled Adult Care, Adult Daycare Facility. Now the latest site plan calls for group home parking. The revised statutes of Missouri 89.020 states that the local zoning authority may require that the exterior appearance of the home and property be in reasonable conformance with the general neighborhood standards. Christopher Drive is a very narrow and windy narrow neighborhood road and there are no parking lots in the front of any homes. The psychiatric treatment facility's proposed parking lot would take up most of the front yard. This parking lot would not conform with the general neighborhood standards. I'm asking if Dr. Page, Ms. Schott, and Ms. Orwick will visit the location so you can determine for yourself that a parking lot with a total of 19 parking spaces would not reasonably conform to the neighborhood. Besides, not conforming to neighborhood standards, the amount of proposed parking would reveal the intended use as not a group home, but rather a medical and psychiatric facility treating co-occurring disorders such as eating disorders and substance abuse disorders. The residents of Oakville ask you to please do the right thing. The idea of a psychiatric treatment facility being placed in a residentially zoned area does not seem legal. We hope you will investigate when Monte Nito's business profile, what Monte Nito's business profile is. And when you do, we believe you have no option but to conclude that this is not a group home as described in Missouri Statute 89.020. Monte Nito can find a more appropriate setting for their psychiatric treatment center. Thank you for your consideration. Our next comments were submitted by Terry Deloge to Fair Lake Drive, Chesterfield, Missouri, 63005. First, why are you not having meetings in person with the public? Restaurants have been serving groups with social distancing, but you cannot meet as a council with your constituents? Are you letting fear keeping you from doing the essential? Protecting our county should be a priority. You totally went overboard with COVID-19, but now you are doing nothing to protect our businesses from looting and violence. Where is the leadership in our county? Obviously, if you aren't upset by protesters gathering without masks, then we should all just get back to living normally, shouldn't we? You are not allowing churches to have full capacity, but you allow highways and streets to be blocked at full capacity with protesters. You are allowing teenage thugs to loot, but you will not allow youth programs to resume. You must allow youth sports to resume as this contributes to the health and well-being of our children. They've already been through so much. I am urging you to do what is right. Please take action. Madam Chair, continuing. <clears throat> following comments from Deb Matush, 1455 Craigwald Road, St. Louis, Missouri, 63122. Executive Page and Council Members. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for all or for some. You speak out of both sides of your mouth. We must social distance unless you're protesting, rioting, or looting. We must wear a mask unless you're protesting, rioting, or looting. We must only congreg congregate in groups of 10 or less unless you're protesting, rioting, or looting. We must limit the amount of people in a business unless you're protesting, rioting, or looting. You can't train in the gym, but you can protest, riot, and loot other people's property. You can't go to the pool, but you can protest, riot, and loot other people's property. How about Lake of the Ozarks? 
Your shaming with the threat of punishment technique makes you look foolish now. So now that the protests have ended social distancing, your platform to make us conform or be sued is weak. And like I said in my first letter, I can't put my finger on it, but it smells of politics. The protesters were protected. The law-abiding citizens are rep- protesters were protected. The law-abiding citizens are reprimanded, shamed, or worse, sued. We went from flatten the curve to flatten the local business owner. I don't get it. Jefferson County and St. Charles County are thriving. We are helping them and hurting our own community. Just dumb. Did I hear on the radio that 40-ish million of the CARES Act money was used for jail improvements? <clears throat> Excuse me. My name is Linda Krenning. I live at 7, 7200 Christopher. We are living in, in a very difficult time, and I realize our St. Louis County Council has a lot to deal with, but their decision will not change all, but their decision will change all of our lives. If you think a medical treatment center will not change our neighborhood, you are wrong. We love our neighborhood, and it doesn't seem fair that an out-of-state business can put a 20-car parking lot in front of a single-family home and think that that is normal. Why can't our council see that this is definitely a business and it doesn't belong in our neighborhood? Something is wrong. I ask myself, what is really going on? Thank you. Following comments from Jan Janice, 7454 Cornell Avenue, University, University City, Missouri, 63130. To St. Louis County Council members, after watching the press conference held by our county executive on Monday, I sent an email to his office voicing my disappointment and outrage. I wanted to share with the council as well. Really? I cannot believe there was no commentary or addressing of the destruction that Ferguson went through or how the protection of the St. Louis County citizens in general will be addressed. I am completely outraged by the lack of action on the county and the state, for that matter, to protect the taxpaying citizens while so-called protesters yet again damage our communities. Where were you on Saturday and particularly Sunday night during the destruction of Ferguson? Destruction you didn't even, didn't even acknowledge at Monday's press conference. You have Im- implemented unreasonable lockdowns on healthy citizens and the business owners instituting guidelines to reopen that are not even reasonable in order for them to make a profit. I'd recommend taking a look at how the state of Florida is handling reopening. They are nearly 100% open and operating almost back to normal. Their numbers were much higher than ours and have managed to be way ahead. Why are you harder on people swimming in the Ozarks than the masses that have been out the last two nights? Those of us that play by the rules are now getting a big slap in the face with the lack of action and protection from those that are placed in charge. It's a shame that people can throw rocks through, through business owners' windows that have been struggling for months due to your lockdown and get off scot-free. And if I go into a crowd of over 10 without a mask or try to swim without a mask, I'm on lockdown again. Please don't tell me it's to keep me safe. Tell that to the business owners who now have nothing left. I have no faith that any information coming out of local government is accurate. There is no common sense. Following comment from Ron Krenning, at 7200 Christopher. I don't understand. What do we have to say that will make you understand that the residents of Christopher are feeling about the mistake that was allowed to happen in our residential neighborhood? Are you really listening to us? You have the power to change this and nothing seems to be happening. You have heard everything. This should never have been allowed to happen and it makes you realize that doing the right thing doesn't mean anything when you're up against big business. Thank you. Following comment from Linda Valvo, 53 Willow Hill Road, St. Louis, Missouri. Dear Dr. Page, Council Chair Clancy, and the St. Louis County Council, I would like to ask you to discontinue the fear-mongering associated with wearing a mask. There is scientific evidence to suggest that wearing a mask doesn't do a thing to stop the transmission of COVID-19 unless it is an N95. Dr. Page, you went on record with shaming people who went to Lake of the Ozarks and did not practice social distancing or wear masks. However, your shaming did not occur when discussing the protesters and or rioters, therefore, please be consistent. 
Open up St. Louis County and stop promoting the fear that has taken hold on so many citizens. The healthcare system is, has not been overwhelmed by COVID-19 patients to the degree that it could not withstand. The curve has been flattened and it is time for honesty and transparency. Sincerely, Linda Valvo. Continuing with William Pyatt, 7184 Christopher Drive, St. Louis, Missouri, 63129. As you know, certain residents of South County have formed an alliance and have engaged a law firm to represent us in our effort to maintain the peace and dignity of the neighborhood we invested in with the confidence that our local government would always have our best interest in mind. If you have accepted my invitation to drive by the property at 7190 Christopher Drive, I am confident you would agree that these citizens who have invested their money in St. Louis County real estate, pay taxes, and pay your salaries would be better served if you were to reconsider and overturn your previous decision to allow this out-of-state for-profit business to install its facility in the middle of our quiet residential community. You have the ability through the re-review of the application by California-based Montenito to keep them from putting this for-profit business in our residential neighborhood. This should never have been approved in the first place, and we implore you to do the right thing with this second opportunity to set things right. We do not need a business that requires 19 parking spaces and will no doubt increase traffic exponentially with employees, visitors, and daily delivery vans and trucks running up and down our road where our children were once able to ride their bikes and play safely in their yards. We have no desire to be forced to take a more aggressive approach. No one needs that. This can be handled by you through the re-review process. We are counting on you now the way we did when we bought our homes. Please represent us over the this outside business venture and reverse the decision to allow Montenito to put their business here. From Diane Unger, 26 Baxter Lane, Chesterfield, Missouri, 63017. As I write this, I have grandchildren whose spring and summer sports participation has been basically eliminated because we must be socially distanced. Yet I see mobs of protesters and looters making their way through our city with absolutely no regard whatsoever concerning social distancing. As I write this, I have finally been able to see my dentist and my health coach both of whom have gone above and beyond to ensure my safety. They have spent hundreds of dollars installing separation panels, fortifying themselves with what looks like hazmat gear, and sanitizing everyone and everything within reach. Yet I see mobs of protesters and looters breaking into businesses. They have no regard whatsoever concerning what they have touched or what germs they may be spreading. Who took their temperature before they illegally entered the building. And finally, as I write this, I am reminded that I attended church via live stream this past Sunday because my house of worship was only allowed a certain number of entrants and all had to wear their masks. Yet I see mobs of people setting fire to churches or defacing and destroying the structures. And I see mobs of people blocking traffic on our major highways. So as I write this, I beg some answers from you. Why cannot our city be completely opened for business? Obviously, social distancing and mask wearing are being observed by many while also being ignored by many more. What do you plan to do about those mobs and rioters and looters who are not practicing social distancing? Will you come down on them as strongly as you have on private taxpaying business owners and citizens in this town? From Anna Crafton, 7204 Christopher Drive, St. Louis, Missouri, 3129. I am asking that the sale of 7190 Christopher Drive to Montenito be reviewed by County Councilman Ernie Trakas, who as representative of the 6th, 6th District should have been informed from the get-go. Please allow Ernie the ch chance voice the chance to voice his concerns and provide you with the information needed since the Zoning Commission and County Council did not do their job. I am sure after review it will be clear that 7190 Christopher is not the correct place for a medical treatment facility. Please keep the character of this residential neighborhood 
as well as uphold the current residential zoning laws and tell Montanito to go elsewhere. From Melanie Broyles, 17621, Lazandra Drive, Wildwood, Missouri, 63005. While I am thankful most business has been at least given a reopening date, I still have concerns about common sense being applied to the restrictions. Why in the world would we tell people to wear a mask at a neighborhood pool with very few people in attendance? Why would a lifeguard wear a mask when they may have to jump in quickly? Someone could get hurt. A child may not hear the guard giving instructions. We are outside. Did someone miss this? At some point, should we consider the numbers? May 19, 47 cases. May 30, 31 cases. May 31, 30 cases. June 1, 26 cases. I am hopeful these are correct. The St. Louis County site is actually getting more difficult to use and factual, clear information is getting more difficult to find. Why are we not reporting active cases? Dallas County in Texas is reporting active, resolved, etc. It appears that we are not doing this as a means to spread fear. Please consider rational restrictions and common sense. St. Charles County and the rest of the state seem to be using guidelines with science, economic concerns, and common sense. I assure we can apply all of these if our intent is to move forward. And from David Workman, 48 Beaver Drive, Creefcore, Missouri, 63141. I'm writing to voice my opposition to the proposal that masks be required at outdoor pools. This is a ridiculous idea. During the entire lockdown, masks have never been required for any other outdoor recreation, golf, hiking, etc. To require them at the pool makes no sense. Everyone is apart, the outdoors is fresh air, and people are already sharing a pool full of water. The likelihood of the virus spreading is almost non-existent. In fact, Swimmers have a higher chance of drowning than catching the virus. We have been practicing social distancing for over two months now, so that should not be a problem. Adding a mask requirement at the pool only serves to make it harder for everyone to breathe. Please take this proposal off the table and throw it away like the masks on the parking lot at Walmart. Madam Chair, continuing. <clears throat> Following comment is from Bruce Adkins. Uh, this is, um, I'm sorry, 12835 Topping Manor Drive, St. Louis, Missouri, 63131. Dear Dr. Page, Chair Clancy, and County Council members, what is going on in our lo local nursing homes? Last week, the Post-Dispatch revealed that over 50% of our nursing homes in the county have been affected by COVID-19. This is high. For comparison, Florida is reporting infection rates of 34% in nursing homes. Last Thursday, May 28th, Dr. Page informed the press that the names of the affected facilities would be disclosed along with case and death numbers. As of this morning, this has not happened. Why? Is the council afraid of, is the council afraid of fielding questions? <clears throat> Excuse me. On Friday, May 29th, Dr. Page and Governor Parson held a press meeting. The county then released a press statement with the headline, St. Louis County cited as setting national standard for nursing home care during COVID-19 response. Is this true? On investigation, respectfully, Dr. Page, despite what you may like us to believe, inclusion in this Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services catalog was not a major award. Further, announcing the formation of the nursing home quick response team 60 days into the crisis is a little late. Going forward, though I hope this will provide support. As a resident, I've heard nothing from local nursing homes. How are they doing? How would they say they have been supported by the public health department? The County Council is accountable to all residents for both its acts of commission and omission. Retirees make up the largest segment of St. Louis County. And when we look at the data, 425 out of, out of the total 444 deaths are amongst those over 60 years old. This highlights how dangerous the virus is to the elderly and those with underlying health issues. Further consideration of the data calls into question the legitimacy of all the directives with regard to schools, businesses, 
and entertainment venues. Right from the outset, we knew who needed to be protected. How well was this executed? Plus, was extending the reopening beyond May 4th even justified? As our county is under assault from both virus and destructive rioters, I believe it is important to accurately report facts, resist creating political narratives, and provide the information citizens need to make good decisions individually and for their loved ones. Above all, be transparent. Sincerely, Claire Adkins. We are Brandon and Julie Rathkeber. We live at 2505 Brush Creek Road. We live catty corner from the house, 7190 Christopher Road, purchased for Montanito Treatment Facility. We are writing to share our concern with the parking lot being put in our residential neighborhood. We have four children, and with this property becoming a high traffic area, we are very concerned about their safety. We feel as though Montanito can find a more appropriate place for their business. Dear Dr. Page, Ms. Choate, Beth Orwick, and council members, my name is Christina Lowry. I live at 7186 Christopher. I'm writing you again in reference to 7190 Christopher. It is my understanding that this is a second review of Montanito claim that they are a group home. My concerns to the entire council is that the is that this review is being completed by the same individuals in the planning department in the county counselor's office without any oversight from any other parties. This is the same group that did not, in my opinion, do their, do, do their due diligence the first time when it came to looking into Montanito businesses. If Beth Orwick and Gail Choate had done a better job on June 27, 2019, we would not be having this conversation today. I believe the same questionable behavior and questionable conduct could happen again. What's to say that they just don't rubber stamp this review again, or worse, they don't even do a thorough review at all? If we, the citizens of Christopher Drive, were able to compile all this information in regards to Montanito research, county and state statutes, to find specific rules that govern group homes versus treatment facilities, as well as investigate the differences in licensures, why were, you able, why were you not able to do the same thing, Ms. Choate or Ms. Orwick? In my opinion, neither of you nor anyone else in your departments gave two hoots about the neighborhood or the residents on Christopher. I think you thought that no one would even question your decisions, let alone care about the choices that you made. Well, you were wrong. We give two hoots. We have questioned your decisions and lack of due diligence from the first day we found out what you had done to our neighborhood. We now have legal representation, Ms. Orwick, Ms. Choate, and Dr. Page. We have turned over every letter we have written to the council, every statute, every person we have spoken to, and every piece of documentation we have uncovered and compiled for the last several weeks. I hope that on this second review, you actually research all the facts as we have done, because with all due respect, we are not going away. Sincerely, Lieutenant Colonel Lowry. The following comments from Tom Sullivan, 751 Syracuse, University of City, Missouri, 63130. Madam Chair and members of the Council, there are still questions about Bill 109, a proposed $2 million contract with Trinity Services Group Incorporated to provide food services and vocational programs for the county jail. The Director of Justice Services, Raul Bonasco, has yet to provide complete answers. I think the council needs to take a much closer look at the process by which Trinity was selected and also the problems the company has had. County Executive Sam Page supports the contract with, with Trinity. Maybe he can explain why. This contract comes on top of another controversial contract for the county jail early, earlier this year involving phone services for inmates. The bidding process was so ir irregular that all of the proposals had to be rejected. I think maybe it's time for the federal authorities to look into matters at the jail. There was also another death at the jail a few weeks ago. An inmate died less than 24 hours after entering the jail, a rather unusual occurrence. Has there ever been a finding as to the cause of death? In addition, for the third time in three weeks, I requested from Mr. Benasco a list of the jail advisory committee members and their emails. I did not get a response. It seems the Justice, Justice Services Director likes to operate in secrecy and does not like answering to anyone. In an email today, I have asked 
Council Chairwoman Clancy to get the information and emails for me. Thank you for listening to my comments. Following comments from Kate Stratton, 10253 Eddingham Terrace, St. Louis, Missouri, 63128. To the County Council, on 5-30-20, the WHO announced that the masks should only be worn by healthy people if they're taking care of someone infected with COVID-19. In quotes, if you do not have any respiratory symptoms, such as fever, cough, or runny nose, you do not need to wear a mask. End quote. Dr. April Baller, a public health specialist for the WHO, says that in a video on the WHO website posted in March, masks, pardon me, this is in quotes, masks should only be used by healthcare workers, caretakers, or by people who are sick with symptoms of fever and cough. End quote. Stop telling people they are selfish if they don't wear a mask, especially since the new data shows masks do not protect anyone from the virus. You have put stringent regulations on outdoor and social activities for children and adults. However, you are doing nothing about the rioters violating social distance regulations. The following quotes are taken from an article titled Lockdown Lunacy, The Thinking Person's Guide, written by J.B. Handley, an honors graduate from Stanford University. End quote. Dr. Scott Atlas took on the topic of schools in this recent interview. There's no science whatsoever to keep K-12 schools closed, nor have the masks or social distancing on children, nor to keep some programs closed. What we, do, what we know now is that the risk of death and the risk of even serious illness is nearly zero in people under 18, end quote. Published science shows COVID-19 is not spread outdoors. In a study titled Indoor Transmission of SARS, COVE-2, and published on April 2nd, 2020, scientists studied outbreaks of three or more people in 320 separate towns in China over a five-week period beginning in January 2020 to determine where our outbreaks started. They discovered almost 80% of outbreaks happened in the home environment. Emerging science shows no spread of COVID-19 in the community, shopping, restaurants, barbers, etc. There's no significant risk of catching the disease when you go shopping. This is in quotes from Professor Hendrik Streek, University of Bonn, end quote. St. Louis County must allow youth sports to resume as it contributes to the health and well-being of our children. They've already been through so much. Tim Jones said it best on his radio show Sunday night, the virus is real, but the hysteria, the hysteria is a hoax. Stop feeling fear, instilling fear and get the county back open fully with no restrictions. Sincerely, Kate Stratton. From Chris Strakoff, 10448 Gregory Court, St. Louis, Missouri. Regarding the approximately $175 million received from the federal government as part of the $2 trillion federal stimulus, St. Louis County Executive Sam Page has allotted only 10% or $17.5 million of the funds in small business relief grants. The need is far greater than the amounts allotted. Request for help from small business is far greater than the $17.5 million will cover. County Executive Page, please consider at least doubling the 10% allotted to help our local business get back on their feet and allow them to put their employees back to work. And our final comment this evening is submitted by Jeff Lowry, 7186 Christopher Drive. I live next door to 7190 Christopher Drive. I am writing to you again this week to request that the company known as Monte Nito not be allowed to open their commercial business in our purely residential neighborhood. I was thinking about this the other day. It is nearly two miles from my house to Telegraph Road. Other than Queen of All Saints Catholic Church and the White House Retreat Home, there is nothing but residential homes located along Christopher Drive and all of the feeder streets and subdivisions off of Christopher. There may be a small home-based business, such as someone cutting hair in their basement, smaller electrician, etc., but absolutely no commercial business businesses that has a parking lot to accommodate multiple vehicles, such as is proposed for this medical treatment facility. A residential neighborhood such as this 
is just not the place for a commercial business that will generate over $2 million in annual revenues. It is my understanding that a re-review process is being conducted regarding Montenito being allowed to open up shop in our residential neighborhood. I am writing to you today to please do the right thing this time and deny Montenito permission to open up their commercial business in a residential neighborhood. I have said it in the past, but I will repeat this point again. While it is our neighborhood this time that is being impacted, I feel that overturning this decision is also important as it sets a precedence for all of St. Louis County, particularly, particularly the unincorporated areas of the county. I believe if you allow Montenito to move in and open up their commercial business, you would be opening up the proverbial Pandora's box and will have other commercial businesses try to open up shop in the county under the guise of a group home. I am asking you, Beth Orwick and Gail Schott, to please do the right thing while there is still time and reverse the initial decision and not allow Montanito to open up their multi-million dollar business right in the heart of a residential neighborhood. Thank you for all your time. Madam Chair, that is all the public comments. That concludes public forum. We will proceed with introduction of bills. Bill number 124, introduced by Council Member Clancy, an ordinance amending ordinance number 27,428 by repealing and reenacting section one pertaining to a contract with Ottolino Winters Hubner Inc. for consulting services in connection with construction of restroom projects in two county parks. Bill number 125, introduced by Council Member Trakis, an ordinance authorizing the Director of the Department of Parks and Recreation to issue a temporary permit to the Metropolitan St. Louis Sewer District, MSD, for MSD's Jefferson Barracks Tunnel MSD project number 1171-015.1 within Jefferson Barracks County Park, authorizing the acceptance of payment from MSD of a fee in the amount of $33,000 for the issuance said permit and authorizing the Director of the Department of Parks and Recreation to execute necessary documents. Bill number 126, introduced by Council Member Trakis, an ordinance authorizing the Director of the Department of Parks and Recreation to issue a temporary permit to the Metropolitan St. Louis Sewer District MSD for MSD's Gravoid Trunk Sanitary Sewer Rehabilitation MSD Project number 10496-015.1 within the Grants Trail right-of-way authorizing the acceptance of payment from MSD of a fee in the amount of $15,000 for the issuance said permit and authorizing the Director of the Department of Parks and Recreation to execute necessary documents. Bill number 127, introduced by Council Member Trakis, an ordinance amending ordinance number 27,418 pertaining to a contract with M3 Engineering Group, PC, for engineering services needed to complete various improvements in six county parks and one other parcel. Bill number 128, introduced by Council Member Clancy, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to accept a grant of up to $420,775 from the St. Louis Gateway Organized Crime Drug Enforcement Task Force Program, appropriating the same for support of the efforts of the St. Louis Gateway Organized Crime Drug Enforcement Task Force, Strike Force, and authorizing the county executive to execute necessary documents. Bill number 129, introduced by Council Member Clancy, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to accept a grant of up to $10,706 from the National Association of County and City Health Officials, appropriating the same for support of the Department of Public Health's local public health initiatives to increase vaccine confidence project and authorizing the acting director of the Department of Public Health or her designee to execute necessary documents. Bill number 130, introduced by Council Member Clancy, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to grant a temporary crane easement to 8027 Forsyth Acquisitions LLC 
for the purpose of operation of a crane over the county property located at 7900 Forsyth Boulevard and authorizing the Director of the Department of Transportation and Public Works or her designee to execute necessary documents. Bill number 131, introduced by Councilmember Clancy, an ordinance authorizing the County Executive to accept a grant of up to $100,000 from the Missouri Department of Higher Education and Workforce Development, appropriating the same for support of the Department of Human Services Return Strong Missouri Rapid Response Program, and authorizing the Director of the Department of Human Services to execute necessary documents. Madam Chair, that is all the bills. Thank you, we will move forward with perfection of bills. Bill number 20, introduced by Council Member Harder. Please hold bill number 20. Bill number 20 is held. Bill number five, introduced by Council Members Fitch, Trakas, and Harder. Please hold on the order of business. Bill number five is held. Bill number 32, introduced by Council Member Trakas. Please hold on the order of business. Bill number 32 is held. Bill number 36, introduced by Council Member Fitch. Please hold on the order of business. Bill number 36 is held. Bill number 76, introduced by Council Members Dunaway and Harder. Uh, please hold bill number 76. Bill number 76 is held. Bill number 109, introduced by Council Member Clancy. I move to hold bill number 109. Bill number 109 is held. Madam Chair, before we proceed, may I make a comment? Go right ahead, Councilman Trigas. Thank you. Um, I'm going to ask the chair to consider a committee of the whole on this bill. I think there are legitimate questions that have been raised with respect to the, uh, the, the contract and the, the quality of services provided by this particular provider. So I, I think it would be appropriate to um, hold a committee of the whole and have some of these questions asked and answered publicly and have the, uh, the uh, contractor come in and do so. Thank you. All right, we will consider that. Um, I know we've got a couple of hearings coming up, so we need to figure out when we can fit it into the schedule, but um, I, I will consider that. Thank you. Bill number 120, introduced by Council Member Nancy. I move to perfect bill number 120. Second, Trakis. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries, bill number 120 is perfected. Bill number 121, introduced by Council Member Dunaway. I move to perfect bill number 121. Second it, days. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 121 is perfected. Bill number 122 introduced by Council Member Clancy. I move to perfect bill number 122. Second, Councilwoman Gray. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 122 is perfected. Bill number 123. Introduced by Council Member Fitch. I would like to hold this for one more week to give my colleague an opportunity to read this because we got it uh, late last week. So let's hold. Bill number 123 is held. Final passage. Bill number 320 introduced by Council Member Clancy. I move, I move to hold bill number 320. Bill number 320 is held. Substitute bill number two for bill number 385, introduced by Council Member Dunaway. I move to hold substitute bill number two for bill number 385. Substitute bill number two for bill number 385 is held. Bill number 14, introduced by Council Members Trakes, Days, Dunaway, Fitch, Walton Gray, Clancy, and Harder. I move to hold bill number 14, please. Bill number 14 is held. Bill number 113 introduced by Council Member Clancy. 
I move for final passage of bill number 113. Second. Harder. Roll call, please. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Did you get mine? Aye. Yes. There we go. There you are. Now okay. We can see you. <laughs> Council Member Gray. I, I guess it's okay. I'm not on the screen. We can see you. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. um, we seem to be having some difficulty getting the council member on the screen when they give their vote. Uh, would the county councilor like to weigh in on this issue? I can't hear. to the county council. I don't know if the county uh, be there. Um, I will say that I can see everyone in a panel at the bottom of my screen. So even if the person who is voting and speaking is not centered, I can still see the person's face. I just I, I just spoke to um, the county councilor and she said that it is fine. She's still able to see us even if we are not centered on the screen. Um, so as long as that is the case, she can still see that each of us um, is voting when it's our time to vote. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I am getting some comments from outside people texting me saying they can see us as we're scrolling through. Good. Okay. Proceed. Madam Chair, on Bill Number One Thirteen, there are seven eyes. Bill Number One Thirteen is finally. Bill number 114 introduced by council member Harder. I move for I move for final passage of bill number 114. Second, Second. days. Roll call. Council member Days. Aye. Council member Dunaway. Aye. Council member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Gray. Keep pushing the wrong thing, I'm sorry. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Computer. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Madam Chair, Bill Number 114, there are seven ayes. Bill Number 114 is finally passed. Bill number 115, introduced by Council Member Clancy. I move for final passage of bill number 115. Second, Councilwoman Gray. Roll call, please. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Gray. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Madam Chair, on Bill Number 115, there are seven ayes. Bill Number 115 is finally passed. Bill Number 116, introduced by Council Member Clancy. I move for final passage of Bill Number 116. Second, Dunaway. Roll call. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. <clears throat> Aye. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Gray. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. 
Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Madam Chair, Bill Number One Sixteen. There are seven ayes. Bill Number One Sixteen is finally passed. Bill Number One Seventeen introduced by Council Member Clancy. I move for final passage of Bill Number One Seventeen. Second, days. Roll call. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Gray. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Madam Chair, just so I'm clear, we're um, considering Bill Number 117 now, right? Correct. I vote aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Madam Chair, on Bill Number 117, there are seven ayes. Bill Number 117 is finally passed. Bill Number 118, introduced by Council Member Harder. I move for final passage of Bill 118. Second by Fitch. Roll call. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Gray. If me. Aye. Council Member <laughs> Clancy. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Madam Chair, on Bill Number 118, there are seven ayes. Bill number 118 is finally passed. Bill number 119 introduced by Council Member Harder. Madam Chair, we have a substitute bill. Please read the substitute bill. Substitute bill number one for bill number 119 introduced by Council Member Harder. An emergency ordinance temporarily authorizing the Director of the Department of Transportation and Public Works to suspend or waive enforcement and application of certain provisions of Chapter 1003, St. Louis County Revised Ordinances 1974 as amended, the Zoning Ordinance of St. Louis County, Missouri, and Title 11, St. Louis County Revised Ordinances 1974 as amended, Public Works and Building Regulations as they relate to food establishments and businesses located in unincorporated St. Louis County, and temporarily authorizing the acting director of the Department of Public Health to suspend or waive enforcement and application of certain provisions of Chapter 807, St. Louis County Revised Ordinances 1974 as amended food code as they relate to food establishments located in St. Louis County and declaring an emergency. I move for adoption of substitute bill one for bill number 119. Second, Fitch. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Substitute bill number one for bill number 119 is adopted. Madam Chair, I would like to move to take up substitute bill number one for bill number 119 on final passage, order of business. Second, Fitch. Second, Trakis. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. I also, Madam, Madam Chair, I move for final passage of bill substitute number one for bill 119. Second, Fitch. Roll call. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Gray. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Madam Chair, on substitute bill number one for bill number 119, you have seven ayes. Substitute bill number one for bill number 119 is finally passed. 
Moving on to resolutions. Madam Chair, this evening we have two resolutions. First resolution, number one, was introduced by Council Members Walton Gray, Days, Dunaway, and Clancy. Uh, please read the resolution. Yes, ma'am. Resolution, whereas the novel coronavirus known as COVID-19 has created a global cri health crisis, and whereas on May 26, 2020, the St. Louis County Council adopted resolution number 6557, finding that the COVID-19 pandemic has disproportionately impacted people of color, especially African Americans, and whereas the documented disproportionate impact of the pandemic has shown an intense light on the pervasive and persistent disparities in the delivery of preventive health services, as well as the quality of health care to Black and African American communities. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the County Council of St. Louis County, Missouri, as follows. Section 1, the County Council, in addition to the assertions made in Resolution Number 6557, further asserts that racism is a public health crisis affecting our entire country, including St. Louis County, and that this persistent and pervasive health crisis has exacerbated the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on Black and African American communities. Section 2, the Acting Administrative Director shall send certified copies of this resolution to the County Executive and the Co-Directors of the Department of Public Health. I move for the adoption of resolution number one. Second, days. Madam Chair, uh, discussion, please. Go right ahead, Councilman Cherkis. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, <clears throat> I see little, if any, difference between this resolution and resolution 6556 that the council passed unanimously last week, in which I was proud to co-sponsor. Because I don't see any difference, any substantive difference between the two resolutions. I fail to see the need for redundancy or to revote on issues this council has already adopted unanimously. As such, I will abstain from voting on this resolution. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the, the issue is there was an error, of, there was a particular, I won't say paragraph, a section that was, we wanted to add and the ordinance doesn't allow for us to amend resolutions or ordinances, so we had to have a new one. That's what happened. Um, I looked at both resolutions, and there does appear to me to be a substantive difference between the resolution passed last week and the resolution tonight. And that difference is that the resolution tonight contains a sentence that says racism is a public health issue, and that was omitted from the resolution passed this week. Madam Chair, can I speak? Councilman Harder. Uh, I too have, I see uh, some redundancy here. Uh, I was in favor of the last resolution, not with many of the uh, whereases, but I did like uh, on, on the last resolution, section one, where it talks about the eight or nine um, action items that this council hopefully will get behind, uh, meaning that we will do more testing and more uh, advo advocacy in the uh, black and African community. Um, I think that's that's those are good issues. Uh, again, like Councilman Trakis, I don't see um, a substantive difference between the two. Um, so I, I am torn uh, seeing that I voted for the last one. Uh, I don't see this. And I see this as being redundant. So uh, my vote will reflect that as well. Thank you. Right, let's go ahead and vote. Roll call, please. Councilmember Days? Aye. Councilmember Dunaway? Aye. Councilmember Fitch? Abstain. Councilmember Gray? Aye. Councilmember Clancy? Aye. Councilmember Tragus? Abstain. Councilmember Harder? No. 
Madam Chair, on resolution number one, there are four ayes, two abstentions, and one no. Resolution number one is adopted. Moving on to resolution number two, introduced by Council Madam. Member Harder. Please read uh, up to section one. Yes, sir. Resolution, whereas Edward F. Yusinski Sr. was a World War II veteran who served in the European campaign in France, Belgium, and Germany as a combat, combat infantryman with the 9th Infantry Division of the United States Army, and whereas during his service, Private First Class Yusinski was captured at Bastogne and taken to Stalag 7-A, as a prisoner of war, was repatriated and awarded the Combat, combat Infantry Badge, POW Medal and Bronze Star. And whereas Mr. Yusinski joined the American Legion in 1949 and served as post commander for Post 472 in 1951 and for Post 302 in 1968. And whereas Mr. Yusinski served his fellow veterans and their families as well as a community as a member of the American Legion for over 50 years. And whereas Mr. Yusinski was a resident of the city of St. Louis from 1914 until 1958 when he moved to Afton in St. Louis County. And whereas Mr. Yusinski <clears throat> lived in Afton until he passed away in 1998 and American Legion Post 302 closed shortly thereafter. And whereas American Legion Post 302 was rechartered in December 2019 and named after Edward Usinski Sr. And whereas American Legion Edward F. Usinski Sr. Post 302 registered in the American Legion Missouri 10th District in St. Louis County has been declared the POW MIA Memorial Post for St. Louis County. And whereas it is fitting that the Council and all St. Louis Countyans pause to honor Mr. Yusinski and all the brave veterans who are members of American Legion Post 302 for their selfless military service to our country and their community <laughs> service in St. Louis County. Thank you. I'd like to move that we adopt uh, resolution number two. Second, Fitch. Roll call. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Gray. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. And Chair, on resolution number two, there are seven ayes. Resolution number two is adopted. Moving on to unfinished business this evening, item number one. Please hold on the order of business, and that will be the order. Item number two, fourth district. I think you're muted. <laughs> did you hear me when I said drop? I did not. Please drop number two from the order of business and please hold four. Excuse me. Um, so item number three. Two. Okay. Item number two, we are dropping from the order of business. So ordered. Thank you. And then item number three, fourth district. Hold. So ordered. Item number four. Six, excuse me. Item number four, six district. Yes. Um, the change of managing officer be approved as recommended, please, and requested. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to new business this evening, we have two prepared orders. Prepared order number one is regarding the matter of donation of two person-born explosive detection 
dogs for use by the police department. I move for the adoption of order number one. Second days. All in favor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Order number one is adopted. Someone needs to mute their phone. I mean, their computer or whatever. Prepared order number two is regarding the matter of a proposed project for industrial development pursuant to the provisions of Chapter 100 RSMO R and S Machining Inc. project. I move for adoption of order number uh, two, please. Second, Harder. All in favor. Aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Motion carries. Order number two is adopted. That brings us to our the end of our agenda this evening. Are there any further comments from the council? I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Days. Is there a second? Second. Second. Done away. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. This meeting is adjourned. Aye.